This is part 37 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement compare validation in Blazor. Before we implement compare validation, let's fix an issue that we have with this custom validator, email domain validator. We implemented this in our previous video and this ensures the email domain is presumetech.com. If we use any other domain, this throws an error. At the moment, if we try and use a string like ABC, for example, this does not have an at character. So when I tab out, notice we have an exception. Let's launch browser developer tools. Index out of range exception with an is valid method of our custom email domain validator class. And the reason we have this exception is because within this provided email string, we don't have at character. And because we don't have at character, this line right here is going to return just one string element. So within the string array, we have only one string element and that is ABC. But then in the if check here, we are trying to retrieve an element that is present at index position one. That is a second element. We are looking for a second element. But remember, this array has only one element. So this is throwing that index out of range exception. And to fix this, all we need to do is ensure the length of the string array is greater than one. Now, when we use a string like ABC, we don't have the exception. The following are two common use cases for compare validation. Email and confirm email fields must match. Similarly, password and confirm password fields must match. Before we actually implement compare validation, I've already done some prep work in the interest of time. So let me first walk you through that. On this edit employee form, in addition to this email field, we also want confirm email field. Now what we don't want to do is include confirm email property within this employee class of the models project. Keep in mind, this is a shared model class. And at the moment, this project is shared by other projects within our solution. We can even share it with projects outside of this solution. So we don't want to pollute this class with additional properties that we need for our edit employee form. Now the confirm email property, we just need it for this edit employee form. So what I have done is within our Blazor web project, created this models folder. And here I created this edit employee model class, which is specific to our edit employee form. So let's take a look at this file. Notice the properties within this class are exactly the same as what we have in our employee class. What I've done is copied all these properties into this class. In addition to the email property, we want confirm email. So let's make a copy of this and change the property name to confirm email. Next, we want to use this class as the model for our edit employee component. And for us to be able to do that within the component class, we need another property of type edit employee model. Let's bring in the required namespace. And let's also name this property edit employee model and initialize it with a new instance. At the moment, we are using this employee property as the model within our view. We want to change this to edit employee model, the property that we have just created. Since we are no longer using this property as the model, let's change the access modifier to private. We still need this employee property because we are using it to store the data that we retrieve by calling the REST API. We now need to copy the data that we have in this object into this edit employee model object because our view binds to this object. And here is the code required for that. We are copying property by property from employee object into edit employee model object. There's a better way of doing something like this and we'll discuss that in our upcoming videos. Notice at the moment we are copying the value that we have in the email property of the employee object into both email and confirm email properties of our edit employee model object. And within our view, we're using the edit employee model object as the model for our edit form. And we also need to change all these references from employee to this edit employee model. Let me quickly do that. We need to do one more thing. In addition to the email field, we also need confirm email field. So just below the email field, let me paste the required HTML. 
this is very similar to the email field. The only difference is it is binding to the confirm email property. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. There we go. In addition to the email field, we also have the confirm email field. Now we want to implement compare validation. So we want to make sure the value in the email field matches the value in the confirm email field. For this, in ASP.NET Core, we have this compare validation attribute. But this does not work very well with this data annotations validator component in Blazor. For this reason, they have introduced this new validation attribute, compare property. And this validation attribute is present in this NuGet package. As of this recording, this is still an experimental package. So things may slightly change by the time they officially release this. In Blazor, this compare property attribute is a direct replacement for compare attribute. So in our Blazor project, to implement compare validation, let's first install the NuGet package. Make sure this checkbox include pre-release is checked and search for the validation NuGet package. There we go. Installation complete. Next, within our edit employee model class, let's decorate confirm email property with compare property validation attribute. Notice from the IntelliSense, we see both compare and compare property. We want to use compare property. And first, we need to specify the other property that we want to compare with. In our case, it is email. And let's also specify the validation error message we want to display. Notice when the values don't match and when I tab out, we see the validation error as expected and when the values match and as soon as I tab out, the validation error disappears. Now, even with this compare property attribute, there's a bit of inconsistency in behavior. Notice what happens when I change this email field. They don't match now, but when I tab out, we don't get any validation error. The validation error is only triggered on change of confirm email, but not on change of the email field value. At this point, to have the validation error triggered, we have to submit this form. So let's include the submit button. In edit employee component, at the bottom of the form, let's include a button element of type submit. So when this submit button is clicked, we want to call a method within our component class. So on this edit form, let's include on valid submit. And then we specify a method here that we want to call. Let's call it handle valid submit. As the name implies, this method is only called on a valid submit. That is when there are no validation errors. We don't have this method within our component class yet. So let's create it now. At the moment, this method does nothing. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss saving employee data in the underlying database. Notice. When I change the email field value and tab out, in spite of the values not matching, we don't get any validation error. But when I submit the form by clicking the button, that's when we see the validation error. I think this is a bit of inconsistency and hopefully this will be fixed in future releases. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.